This Final Cut Pro 10 tour presentation is brought to you by the LumaFord Share Station, the world's best storage for Final Cut 10. For more information on how the Share Station can improve your workflow, head on over to LumaForge.com. Yeah, just so I will present a little bit quickly a software on what we do. So we are a software company uh, based in Belgium. Uh, we do software on the Mac, and we are using standard video cards from AJ Blackmagic in order to have in and out. So we do basically we do everything around uh, Final Cut Pro and editing and so on. So what we can do is we can ingest or so record. You, you are doing a live show. You want to record anything, so we can record that on your Mac, and then you can start editing with Final Cut Pro 10. Then export. Then we can also do broadcast for. 24-7, for example, or we have also a play-out application. So we think that the Mac platform is the best broadcast platform, both for its simplicity and reliability. It's really easy to use, it's reliable, and also it's the fact that we are providing some uh, software solution for ingest, play-out, and so, so on. You can all be on the same platform in your production or TV station facility. You don't need to learn another platform, both for the users and for the system integrators that need to learn another system and so on. So everything can be on the Mac, on your TV production or, uh, or TV station. So I'll take some files here and drag and drop in on the video, which is our playout application. OK, so you can see it's really easy to use. I will change the uh, playout format and 1080i50. OK, here we go. So as you see, simple drag and drop your clips in your playlist, and you can immediately start playing. While it's playing, you can still edit the playlist. So it's really flexible while you're still playing. Uh, there are a lot of things you can edit, trim the clips, uh, show a timeline. It's very quick. But the most important part that you want to see is probably the ingest and the relation with uh, Fine Cut Pro 10. So, so pretty easy to use a user interface. On the left hand side, you have the sources. So it's well, it depends what you have connected to your Mac. As I said, you can use any video card from AJ Blackmagic. So depending on what you have connected, you will have more or less in an inputs. Uh, we also do uh, some bundles, some hardware bundles. Uh, this one, for example, is the M80. Uh, it, can, it has eight HD connectors, uh, so it's very easy. You connect that to your Mac, just one Thunderbolt cable, and you have eight HD inputs on your Mac. So very easy and flexible, so you'll see something like that. Uh, we have done the, that bundle because uh, we felt that uh, we have done that at a time where there was no solution to do eight HD input on a, on just a small box like that. If you wanted to do that previously, you had to connect multiple devices, so it was a bit more complex to set up. So we figured, well, we'll do something simple: one box, one Thunderbolt cable, and you, here you go with eight HD inputs. So you have your inputs, and simply drag and drop and you have enabled your first input. Let's do a quick demo. Yeah, it's replicated, so it's all the same signal, but of course, if it's multicam, you'll have a different signal. And I just enable my sources like that. All right? So now I have enabled my sources in those previews, and I will set destinations. So a destination is what? I hope there's some zooming. No. Uh, so a destination is a place where you want to record. So I want to record in that folder. That's the location by default. And to a specific codec. So we support a lot of different codecs. Depending, I will not go, will not go into too much details about those different types of destinations. But depending on what you set here, you'll have access to more or less codecs. We support record also uh, to QuickTime and MXF. All right, so we support a lot of Codex, ProRes, MXF, uh, H.264, and all that. So what you do is that you create your destination. You can uh, uh, create multiple destinations. So I could create another one. And I could say that I want to record to another storage. So I have a, a redundancy if I need. Or I could recall to another codec if I want to uh, have a high res and a proxy. Then once you have created your destinations, you go in each of the viewer and say I want to recall to that destination here, and let's enable the same one. I can do also drag and drop, so it's easy. 
Once it's done, you change the name here of your recording, IBC 2016, and just for one channel, start recording. So you see, I didn't. I just started previously. So just to show, I like to show how quick and easy it is to start a recording without really knowing anything about the software first. So now I'm recording, and I can do a reveal in Finder. And you can see that file is currently recording, and I can open it and start playing it out. And that file will grow, so you can, as Peter explained with all the sports that he has been doing, those files, you can import them in Final Cut Pro 10 and start editing. I'll show even more. So if you want to do multicam, then I can do something like that, select the different you see there is a blue selection area. And now I can gang record, so record at the same time. That's probably the playout that stopped. Let me do that. Put the playlist in loop, it's best. So it plays all the time. And back to my recorder. And I can quickly rename all that. Multicam, Multicam IBC and apply, and you'll see that all the names of the different sources will be changed at the same time. So I've got Multicam IBC, and I can start recording all the sources at the same time. So now I'm recording four channels on that Mac. And again, I can do a reveal in Finder. And here you have all the different inputs so with the name I set and the name of the source, of, of course, because otherwise <laughs> we'd have only one file. And all those files, I can import them in Final Cut Pro. Let's do a new library. Multicam, yes, that's not very original. And those files, I can import them in my library. Oops. And yeah, the file is only existing at the beginning, of course. And you can see if I grow, maybe I can do that. And you can see that here there's no media because, of course, it, this has not been recorded. But we are just a little bit backwards of time. So I can start playing from there. And this media will grow. It will update in the timeline, and you can start editing on the fly. You could even select, if it's a multicam, you select all the angles, right click, create a multicam clip, and let's check quickly the settings. Looks OK. And now I've got my multicam. If I view show the angles, you can see that you have your different angles, and you can use that and immediately start editing. Uh, this is how mainly it's used, Move Recorder. It's the ability to do edit while ingest. Uh, but we have also other features like the ability to uh, do scheduled recording. So if you have something happening every Sunday, you can plan and schedule the recording for that. We can control VTRs. Uh, the first version, well, it's Move Recorder 3, it's the third version. The two first version had VTR, third version we had all oh, VTR. Nobody uses that anymore. We <laughs> are not going to develop, but we had many, many requests, especially with that, uh, because people have a lot of archives, tape archives that they want to digitize. And if they can do eight channels on one Mac to uh, digitize the archive, they have usually a lot of VTRs. It's really, it's really nice. So we have done that. So we uh, we can now record and control v eight VTRs from one Mac. So that's pretty flexible. And there are other uh, interesting features. The other software that I wanted to quickly show you, because it's, re it's been uh, announced at NAB uh, and released at IBC, it's the, uh, our the first instant replay. Uh, this is called mReplay. So I can quit that. So mReplay as a software that you can use. Again, it's a software using standard video card from AJ Blackmagic, or we also have a box like that, that allows you to do instant replay. So here in that uh, configuration, we have on the left-hand side, we have the different inputs that are available and the different outputs, because it's replay, so you have to record and play out. So here we have six inputs, recording, well, it's not recording there, but just to show you the idea is that you are here, oh, let me just enable the last, Two, so we have six, and maybe an output. Okay, so here 
on in my viewers, I can select what I want to preview. Here I've selected to uh, preview camera one. There it's camera two, three, four, five, six. And here I've got I've selected an output. And for the output, I can select which camera would, will be sent to that output. OK, so I have camera three. And now I'm in live, OK? So I've got my output at the bottom that is showing that. And then we can see something interesting happening. You can immediately stop and s go back in time and replay that in slow motion. And while you replay it, you can, with keyboard shortcuts, uh, change which angle. You see I'm changing the angle. So choose the angle that you like to show at that moment. We can also uh, create uh, clips. So of course, there'll be important things. Uh, there are two kind of views. The thing that I just showed is just instant replay. Something happens from go back in time and replay it. But also, what's interesting in that is to create highlights. So at the end of the match or whatsoever, you can build your highlights with clips and all that. So how do you do that? You play, you select the point where you want, you know, it's the regular GKL that everybody understands. Hit in to create an endpoint. You can see that here that I have an endpoint set. And as soon as I will hit the out point, it will create a clip that I can, again, with the same keyboard shortcut as Final Cut Pro 10, E, you know that. <laughs> so E, it puts the, the clip at the end of the playlist. And the other keyboard, if I want to insert, W, W. <laughs> Thank you. And so I have inserted there. And then I can play my playlist simply by selecting my output. And now I'm replaying the playlist in that area. And for that playlist, I can set I want to play the clip at 50% speed. And I want to use the angle that can run through to, et cetera. So very easy workflow, very easy way to, uh, to prepare uh, a replay. Then once you're done uh, doing the, your live show, of course, you may want to keep some of the clips. And we have uh, the option to select the clips and select export. You'll export that. We'll keep all the angles. So we, you can export the clips and the playlist. Uh, the playlist it will be just one file with all the, the change of angles that you have done. So it's very easy to do. One thing that also is not done yet in the version that is available on the website, but will be done very soon, is the ability to export an XML in order, because the file that we record, uh, because we record all the time, the files that we record are regular QuickTime files. So you can have access to those files from Final Cut Pro. You could just drag and drop them in Final Cut Pro, start editing on those files as well, the same way as in Move Recorder. But we felt also that it would be easier to just say export XML, import the XML in Final Cut Pro, and you have the multicam there ready for you to edit. Uh, also, uh, the way I showed earlier, or have the playlist. You export the playlist, and boom, you have your sequence with your project already with the playlist. So you can fine tune in, add, add titles, or things like that. So this is what we do. I've done. Really quick, again, you can visit our website, softron.tv. There's a lot of information there, and you can contact us anytime. Thank you. Thank you.